What's up everybody, it's Matt from HowToMotorcycleRepair.com uh, I thought I'd do a follow-up video on uh, the Makita 9227C that I uh, purchased for myself for Christmas. Now, I'll link to the previous video. You'll see that annotation pop up. Um, basically, I bought this buffer for 50 bucks off eBay. It's used, of course, and uh, in the description it said there's a loud grinding noise. So I figured I'd pick it up and uh, try to tackle the to find out what the issue is or or just run it as is and, and just deal with it for how often I plan on using this. Now, um, let me cut to the video on the noise itself because now I can't I can't run it for you now since the old part is off of it. So here's that video of it running real loud. So there's something going on in here. You can hear the noise, whether it's the bearing or the bevel gear. Um, basically, I'll just take this off and see what's going on and see if I can fix it. All right, so it's making uh, a lot of noise. You can It almost sounds like it, rocks are tumbling in it. And basically, what I found is after removing these four screws, just taking this part on and off, the noise went away. So when I initially was spinning this, the bearing in here felt pretty, pretty lousy. It was really, uh, really chunky. And basically, here's that bearing. Just, just felt not too smooth. So I figure I'd replace that. I did replace that, and that did not solve the problem. Now I work about a block or two away from the Makita Service Center. So I just walked in there and I showed them what the issue was and basically they took one look at this bevel gear and they said that, that that's your problem right there. Um, I'll zoom in on this in a little bit but basically there are some gears that are pretty chewed up. There's about one, two, three on this side and there's one or two on this side. So that's that's what the issue was. And also you know they took a look at my armature. This This looked okay they said, you know, just, just take your chance and replace this part and, and see what happens. And that, that took care of an issue. Just, just replacing this part alone resolved my problem. So in this video, I'm not going to show you how to replace this because you're going to need a press, but I'll walk you through on not what to do and just give you a few tips on if you need to replace this gear. Because basically, I didn't support this correctly in a hydraulic press. I supported it here versus here and I cracked this housing. Now luckily this housing was only like eight bucks so I was able to um, you know just buy a new one and um, a couple more things is this pin here is a slip fit in the bearing and this bearing is also a slip fit in this in this housing and there's a circlip in here. Alright so let's pretend this is a press here what you're going to want to do is support it right here or if you can find a bushing that totally supports this this little ledge right here and this washer is loose and you don't you can the bushing can go all the way to the OD of this pin so basically what I, I use is some parallel blocks that are about the width of that and then basically you apply pressure here and it takes quite a bit of force to get this to move I was pretty uh, scared on keeping the pressure up and finally it just made a creaking noise and it finally dropped down so what you're gonna do is you're gonna press this down to about this surface and then you're gonna get a, have to get a 3 8 uh, pin and push it further down and this whole whole thing just drops right out and this washer is loose on here and basically you're just going to press this until there is zero uh, lash in and out in the axial direction and that's pretty much how this comes together
All right, so now it's time to load this thing up with grease. Now, when I took this apart, all the grease, you know, it was just basically like wheel bearing grease, and all the grease was pretty much away from the surfaces that needed to be lubricated. Um, I did a little research, and I came across this auto body forum where one guy uh, mentioned that as soon as he buys one of these, he pulls all the grease out using no solvents. He just kind of takes out whatever, and then he mixes some gear oil and wheel bearing grease to try to thin it out a little bit. So that's exactly what I did here. It's about a 50-50 mix. And you can see it's just a little, just flows a little better. So hopefully that will get grease to where it needs to go. Now it's, it was 40 degrees in this garage right now and I just kicked the heater on and it's up creeping up to 60. Uh, but I figure once it gets up to 60 or 80 degrees, this is going to flow a little bit better. And of course, once once this heats up, it'll it'll flow much better. Now he mentioned to get this to a cool honey, so I think I'm right about there, and we'll give it a go. Basically, I'm going to fill it two thirds full. And obviously if you get too thin it'll start to leak out and you can easily adjust that and thicken it up and this is just held in place with four screws Also using my new JIS screwdrivers from Vessel that I got for Christmas and man I love them they fit screws so much better you know at least the Japanese Phillips and I don't know I like the grips too Another thing I had to do, uh, this ground plug was missing, ground terminal was missing on the plug, so what I did is I just snipped it off, got a new one to two dollar plug from the big box store and I'm ready to go. And I want that ground plug there because that's what gets rid of the static discharge that's generated when you're when you're buffing and I don't want I don't feel it. Like Alright, so let's see how this thing sounds. Nice and quiet. I think there's a little bit of noise. I don't know if that's normal or not, but basically it's a whole lot better than it was. Another thing is I took this whole thing apart and this is the air intake here and when I took this all apart there was about this much a whole ball of wool fibers used from you know a buffing pad so all these fibers just came flying off and got sucked in here and I'm glad I took that all apart because this thing was getting no air movement I mean when you put when you're running this thing you should feel air getting sucked here and it should blow out of the vent here so make sure that that is going on so you you know don't overheat the unit oh and if you're looking part for parts for this Makita um, 
you know, I mentioned I'm, I'm two blocks away from the service center in my town or, you know, from where I work, but I can give you a link to um, an online store which has an exploded diagram and you can pick and select all the parts that you need to order. So that, that's very helpful um, if you need to, if you're not near a service center, if you don't want to mail it in. So go to my, go below this video, there, there's going to be a link to my blog post which will uh, redirect you to all the info you need. Alright guys, so that's all I have for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Again, check out my site, howtomotorcyclerepair.com. I'll have some upcoming videos of me uh, attempting to buff stuff. I mean, I have very little experience using a rotary. Uh, it's something I really want to uh, get better at. I got a ton of stuff to buff. Uh, cosmetic things are usually the last thing on my list on uh, you know for motorcycles or cars or whatever. I mean, I'm just not into cosmetic stuff. I'm more into uh, mechanical soundness of, uh, of all my things. Um, but anyway, you know, it's something I've always wanted to learn. I think, uh, you know, there's nothing better than good looking paint. So, uh, you know, I did one boat so far and, you know, it was gel coat, it was really oxidized and, uh, you know, it wasn't so bad. It's very time consuming. Um, but you know, it's not the hardest thing in the world. So, um, we'll see what happens when I apply this to, uh, you know, some clear coat or whatever. So anyway, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.